Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for the 1st of May 2022. In this video, Susan reads our Bible reading and we think about it and then we affirm our faith at the end. This morning's reading is taken from Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35 under the heading on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women were amazed. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. At the beginning of Luke's Gospel, he sets out how he wrote his book. He carefully researched the facts uh, and he looked at various sources of evidence uh, for what he wrote down. Among these sources were what he'd gleaned about the life of Jesus from St Paul, with whom he'd been a travelling companion. Uh, St Mark's Gospel, which he came across at some point and used extensively. Uh, and his own researches into the life of Jesus, probably when Paul uh, was locked up at Jerusalem and Luke had the opportunity of travelling around the Holy Land. Uh, when reporting on the resurrection, Luke decides to cast uh, all of the things that he's said uh, in the form of what happened on that first day when Jesus was raised. And this story about the journey to Emmaus is one of them. And I think that the reason that he writes the name Cleopas uh, is to indicate where he got the story from, Cleopas himself. It's interesting that he doesn't report the appearance of Jesus to Peter, and that's probably because he hasn't met Peter himself and only knows of Peter uh, through Mark's Gospel and through what St Paul knows and writes in 1 Corinthians. And of course, that doesn't include the personal details of Jesus' appearance to Peter. 
Anyway, uh, the reason that these two are going to Emmaus is not disclosed in the text, but it seems to me obvious enough. The bottom had fallen out of their world. They'd been going to J Jerusalem with Jesus to see Jesus become the Messiah, the Redeemer of Israel, the Deliverer of the people, the chucker out of the Romans, the restorer of the land of Israel to top nation. And it hadn't happened like that. Uh, and of course, they've forgotten that Jesus explained that to them. Jesus instead had been crucified. The party was over. It was time to go home. The bottom has dropped out of their world. Uh, they can't see God anymore. Uh, in fact, when Jesus himself draws near and introduces himself, uh, they do not recognise him. I wonder uh, why it is that they were kept from recognising. Some people have said maybe the light was in their eyes. Some have said uh, maybe Jesus had changed in appearance in some way. Uh, but I think myself it was probably their, their depression uh, which did not allow them to catch what was obvious. What are you talking about? Uh, and the visitor gets them to explain what's been going on. And their words give the game away, really. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed. The old prophets in the Old Testament had all brought God's message, but they'd all been killed in various different things and had not achieved the goal that God had wanted them to achieve. And it was like that with Jesus as well. They used to call Jesus the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One, uh, the Son of God even, uh, but now he's been demoted. Uh, they look round and they cannot see God in their world. And maybe uh, that is what the passage is there for us for, because the truth is that each of us goes through times uh, when we doubt our faith, when we wonder where God is, and when we seek for explanations and don't find them. Uh, and then there's this second thing, isn't there? They don't know even whether to trust their friends. Some women have amazed us by reporting that they went to the tomb and Jesus uh, was not there and they had seen a vision of angels who said it was alive. But uh, when the men checked it out, they had not seen Jesus. Uh, they must know that the women were trustworthy, uh, but here they are. The Jewish system is that women cannot be relied on for anything major, and so uh, they begin to doubt. Uh, when we lose our faith, even the things that we were once certain of, we begin to wonder whether it was all just a, a big mistake. Jesus sorts them out. But interestingly, he doesn't sort them out the way we expect uh, when Mary uh, Magdalene, this is in John's Gospel, uh, wanted to know uh, whether it was Jesus, uh, sh she recognised him immediately by his voice, uh, and thus she was able to hold on to him. But not these two. Uh, he points them instead to the scriptures. And why is that? Well, it's probably because Luke realises that when we go through our dark times, we'll need to be pointed to the scriptures as well because uh, very often we will not physically see Jesus. He may disclose himself to us in various ways, but we can't rely on that. But what we can rely on is the witness of the Bible to us. And so he says, uh, isn't it right that the Christ has to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Doesn't that, uh, isn't that the message of the prophets and the scriptures? Is it? Well, it's not quite so clear in all passages, but if you look at something like Psalm 22, which Jesus quoted on the cross, uh, which has the picture of desolation and abandonment, and then comes uh, in verse 22 of it to a, a, a statement of praise and reliance and trust in God. Or if you look at Isaiah chapters 52 and 53, the suffering servant, where it says uh, that the servant of the Lord uh, must take upon himself uh, the stripes which were deserved by people who had sin. And he uh, would redeem people and he would see death. And then afterwards uh, he would see his descendants glorified. Uh, he would uh, be promoted and find uh, peace in the sight of God. Uh, both of these passages point to uh, the Christ having to suffer and then rise from the dead and be glorified. Uh, and they had not noticed it, but Jesus pointed out. 
Uh, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. It must have been an amazing Bible study, mustn't it? Uh, we can't do it all now because uh, Jesus, after all, uh, although he gave the details, they're not recorded in Luke's Gospel. Uh, but here are some instances just to get us started. Doesn't it say in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 that Eve's descendant will bruise the serpent's head and didn't Jesus bruise Satan uh, by defeating him on the cross? Uh, doesn't uh, the story of Noah point out uh, human sin and the necessity for its punishment? But doesn't it also say uh, that humanity can be saved? Uh, and a fresh start can be made, and wasn't this fulfilled in Jesus? Uh, doesn't Genesis chapters 12 and 15 say that Abraham believed God, and this faith was credited to him as righteousness, and if we put our faith in Jesus, we too can receive his righteousness? Doesn't Genesis chapter 22 say that Isaac became a sacrifice, uh, not uh, a physical sacrifice because uh, he was delivered from it but a, a type of the one who was to come uh, that Jesus would be sacrificed in order to make peace between ourselves and God uh, just the first few chapters of the Bible but uh, all indications of what was going to happen and Jesus explained all of these things to them but uh, they will be reassured by his physical presence too. And when they get to Emmaus, they recognise him uh, in uh, the breaking of the bread. Uh, sometimes uh, God will disclose himself to us in a more immediate way than just the scriptures. Uh, we should rely on the scriptures, but we should also expect that God will be close to each one of us. And the effect of this disclosure uh, is to drive them back further uh, to things which will reassure themselves. Uh, they immediately want to return to their friends because the truth is, in the converse with Christian friends, uh, we will find ourselves supported and helped in our faith. They get up and return to Jerusalem and immediately uh, they hear uh, good news, encouraging news from those who are their friends. And uh, it is in particular the testimony of Peter uh, that convinces them the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Peter. When we go through difficulties in our lives, I think Luke is saying to us, we need to rely on the scriptures and uh, go back to the fundamentals of our faith. Uh, we need uh, to seek for the presence of the Lord uh, in worship and in the sacrament. Uh, we need to share with Christian friends in order that we can be encouraged. We need to listen to the good things which God is doing in other people's lives. Uh, when the bottom falls out of our lives, it is not necessarily uh, the end. Rather, it can be a new beginning of faith, as it was for these. May it be so for us too. Years ago, the Christian Church put together a statement of Christian faith. It's called the Apostles' Creed. Let's say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen and to follow us into the next part of our worship in which we pray, uh, please again choose it when it appears on the screen after I've finished speaking. 